And so evolution is a, a sequence of chance events, if you will, a sequence of these random events. Uh, and the idea is that if you could rewind the tape of life to, to use the, uh, the analogy that the late Stephen Jay Gould used or the metaphor that Gould used and, and replay the tape of life, the outcome would be different every time. Uh, that is, again, uh, the outcome of the evolutionary process is in effect directionless, it's, it's happenstance. Evolution is a historically contingent process. Now, as somebody who uh, views uh, life from the lens of a biochemist, but also from the lens of a, a, a Christian, I struggle with the idea of God using evolution as a way to create because when you think about this process where evolution lacks direction, where it's a historically contingent process, where it's a, an unguided, undirected process, I find it difficult to square that in any way, shape, or form with the idea that God is employing evolution as a means to create. Now, what I see many uh, friends of mine who are evolutionary creationists or theistic evolutionists do is they argue, well, maybe God is directing the evolutionary process in ways that are imperceptible to us, uh, that God is directing the evolutionary process, let's say through manipulating things uh, uh, at the quantum level. And so that God's activity is buried within quantum indeterminacy. And so that he's actively directing the outcome of evolution, but we're not able to actually recognize that. And, and so to me, I struggle with that idea because it, if we can't recognize how God is involved in the process, then why are we appealing to a creator directing the evolutionary process? And in my experience, people that are skeptics uh, or, or seekers who have questions about how, how evolution fits within the Christian faith, they're usually not impressed, in my experience, with that particular approach where you're, you're making God superfluous and then you're tacking God uh, onto the process at the back end as a theological maneuver. Uh, and, and so I find many people are really not impressed with this. Now, this is where process structuralism comes in, because this is a, a very interesting idea, at least as I uh, understand it. And one of the thinkers who I think has been really influential in advancing this idea would be Simon Conway Morris, an evolutionary biologist and a paleontologist who's a, an expert, one of the world's leading experts in the Cambrian explosion. And uh, Simon Conway Morris argues that actually evolution is not historically contingent, but rather it appears to be directed towards specific end goals. And his argument for this is the high level of convergence that we see in, in the living realm, that it, look as, it looks as if uh, evolution has independently hit upon identical or nearly identical outcomes over and over and over again. And he argues that this seems to indicate that there is something within the laws of nature that are physically constraining the, the, the evolutionary outcome, directing the evolutionary process towards a particular end goal. And so the way to think about this is that, again, he would still argue that evolution involves random variation of the genetic material that's operated on by natural selection, but, uh, but that, that that process that is operating is constrained by, uh, by the laws of nature. And so it, the analogy could be, if, you, if anybody's familiar with Hot Wheels, it would be like a Hot Wheel track where you're placing a car at the top of the track and that car, when you let go, is going to operate according to uh, the gravitational forces that, and the frictional forces that are operating on it. But because it's on a track, it's going to go to a, a specified end, end point. It's going to go where you direct it based on the structure and the design of the track. And so Simon Conway Morris argues that when you think about convergence, uh, it seems to indicate that evolution is predetermined to go to particular end goals that seem to be, again, specified by certain physical constraints uh, that are imposed upon living organisms. And, and so this would be called process structuralism, where evolution is not unguided, but is a directed process. And I find this idea actually intriguing 
and is an idea that I think is, is actually compatible with theism and is an idea that I think uh, forms a type of theistic evolution that is something where you can clearly see a teleology to the evolutionary process where you could see God ordaining or uh, actually directing or designing uh, nature in such a way that evolution goes to particular endpoints. So I find the idea intriguing. I'm, I'm open to the idea. Uh, uh, and, and so uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that I embrace it, but I'm very much open to the idea. And I think this is the type of thinking that actually provides a way forward for uh, evolutionary creation that begins to, I think, force a convergence of evolutionary creation and old earth creation, uh, that once you start talking about structural structuralism or process structuralism, you now are uh, operating in a regime that's very similar to how an old earth creationist would think about God, namely that God is intervening uh, throughout earth's history to bring about his particular purposes. How precisely God intervenes, I think, is an interesting question that relates to divine action. But I think once you start describing God's involvement in that way, and you start looking at structure, uh, process structuralism, it definitely becomes one mode of, of what operation or one mode of divine activity that, again, I think begins to build a bridge between theistic evolution and old earth creationism.